these three bottles are the entire amount of hot sauce I have in my house right now. Seems kind of sad in comparison to your collection. Uh, yeah. Everybody has to start somewhere, right? Welcome to Atlas Obscura's show and tell, where we're taking you into the homes and the living rooms of some of the most fascinating collectors on earth. I'm Annie Eubank, and I am the associate editor of Gastro Obscura. And today we're going to talk with Vic Klinko, the owner of the world's largest hot sauce collection. Hey, Vic, how's it going? Great, Annie. Thank you so much for letting me be here. So the last time we talked, it was November 2018, and you had 8,600 bottles of <laughs> sauce in your collection. Right. What, how many do you have now? Roughly 9,200-ish. That's incredible. How did you get started on this very unusual path of hot sauce collecting? My first Christmas with my wife, and she knew how much I liked hot sauce, so she got me, I think it was six or seven different bottles um, just for the Christmas uh, as a present, and I put them out on a kitchen counter, and everybody came over and laughed at like the, you know, the, the funny labels and you know, the, the crude humor and such, and it just kind of took off from there. Do you still have those bottles? I do, I do. I have a couple of them sitting right here. Yeah. And it was funny. So the collection started, we were in um, in Florida, right? We lived in Orlando um, at the time. And these bottles were from here in Phoenix. Uh, they're actually in Goodyear. They made my Southwest specialty. So I have three of some of the original. If I got a sand, this is, this is kind of cool, right? So this is the beginning of the collection. That is, that's where it all started. Isn't that crazy? From maybe like a couple dozen bottles to what's behind uh, you right now. Right, so, right. Yeah. Just so different. Right? It's crazy. Yeah. And how long ago was that? How, how many, when, when was that first Christmas? Yeah, that was like 22 years ago. Oh right? my gosh. Gonna... You know, you think about a bottle of hot sauce, that's kind of ephemeral. That, when it's used up, right. it's used up. And you're holding right. on to some stuff that's, right. you know, would, right. would not get preserved otherwise. Yeah, I want to be able to preserve it, right? I want to be able to do something that people can come to and look at, right? Especially my friends that are in the business, and they come back and they look and they go, oh, I remember that guy. Oh, I remember that, right? I remember that period. I remember that time. So it's, it's neat. What would you say is the most unusual bottle that you have? Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, I have... Oh, my God. Right? That is... <laughs> aren't that cool? That's and incredible. that is a, it's a handmade base, right? It's a wooden base. And each one of these bottles, right, is hand-blown glass, right? Oh, and it's supposed to be a Carolina Reaper, right, which is the Guinness Book of World Record holder. It's the hottest chili pepper in the world. This is by Cully's out of New Zealand. This one is kind of cool. This is by a company called um, Hellfire. Whoa. Right? And that one is kind of right. So it's a clay, right, handmade so each one has a little bit of variance, right? Because if they're, they're handmade, it's not, you know, it's not production. Check, I'll do one more, right? I'll check this one out. And that is what it looks like, right? It is a grenade, right? And there's hot sauce in there. <laughs> That's from K. John's as well. So that, that one you can't take on TSA, right? On the airplane to take it home from the show. But it's <laughs> you must be either the easiest person to buy gifts for or the hardest person to buy gifts for because I bet a lot of people are just like, I'll get them hot sauce. And then you're just like, cool, thanks. I have three of these already. You know, it's funny. It, it, that is true. But in, in the bigger picture, then I get to eat it, right? So I get, to, I get to try it. I love asking collectors this question. Which hot sauce is your holy grail? Like, what right. was the hot sauce that it took you the longest to get your hands on that you longed for for the most amount of time? That's that bad boy right there. That is K. John's Excalibur, right? It's kind of shaped like, like a, a sword, right? So it sits down into the... That one took me a while to get, and now that I have it, it's probably, it's that one, right? And what kind of sauce is inside? I, I think it's a Fatale. I don't remember exactly. So each one that he did was different, with different sauces in each one of his bottles. So there's a, there's a black cap, there's the, the burgundy cap, there's different ones that he put different sauces in each one. Exactly how rare is Excalibur? How many were made? Yeah, you know what? I don't know how many are actually out there. Right? And that's one of the cool things when you talk about rare models. Right? So this is probably one of those that gets probably the most talked about. This is the Blair's Caldera, right? Oh, and I think there were about 500 of those made. So it's a three-level um, uh, bottle. It has a 1 million, a 5 million, and a 10 million skill unit extract in it, right? 
So again, as they as they become more rare and there's there's not as many of them out there, it's just like any other collecting stamps and baseball cards. They just get, you know, they raise in value. Okay, what on earth is the caldera made out of to make it that yeah. hot? Yeah, it's straight extract. So extract, and, and, and again, this is a boil down. This is a simple explanation. So what makes a chili pepper hot is the capsaicin oils that are inside of it, right? So they extract those oils. They do whatever they do chemically. I'm not a scientist. And then they make, it's basically the component for pepper spray. Ooh. So it's on a Scoville unit um, rating. So your jalapeno is about three, maybe 5,000 Scoville units. A habanero, 500,000 maybe topping out. Ghost pepper, 1 million Scoville units. So again, right, higher the number, then you start getting into like 10 million and the hottest one in the world is, is up into the 16 million Scoville units. Oh my God. Yeah, that's this boy boy right here. I got it in a, it's in a little. <laughs> a containment right? a unit. Box, right, yeah. So this is the Guinness Book of World Record holder as the hottest hot sauce in the world. Oh. And it's not even a hot sauce. It is crystallized. So 16 million and over, I think, is all crystallized capsaicin. So it's not even a liquid anymore. So, and then if you start getting into uh, 23 million and above, it's considered weaponized. You can't even buy it. And so what is this one called? This is uh, Blair's 16 million. Oh, my God. And have yeah, you ever tried simple. it? I've not yet. Yeah, I've not tried it. The hottest I've tried was 11 million. Okay. I imagine that would, like, injure you at a certain point. Like... If it gets too hot, yeah, right. So you start getting up into that weaponized number, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty extreme. And some of them are novelties. You just could not pour ten million Scoville unit extract. You put a drop into a sauce or uh, into a meatloaf, whatever it is that you want to kind of spike it up a little bit. That would be some weaponized meatloaf. Like Yeah, right, right. right? <laughs> And so the ones you just showed me, what peppers are they made out of? So it's, you know, it's funny. A lot of people say that, you know, there's, there's ghost pepper extract, there's this extract. Most of your general extracts are just made with red peppers, just, just in general. Huh. They do it chemically for the most part. And so how do you accumulate your collection? How, like, do you, do you buy a lot of it? Do people send them to you to be included? Wow. What's the yeah. method to the madness? So... I have been absolutely blessed, right? So social media has been fantastic for me. I, I started a page on my Instagram where I show sauces that come into the collection and I give website information for folks to, to go back and look at them and try them and hopefully purchase them. I get a lot of folks that just want to be included. So one of the coolest ones that, that I think I've ever gotten was from Romania. So check that out. That is a velvet box. All right. And inside the velvet box is a is satin line with the bottle inside. Isn't that wild? And you're probably going to ask me what kind of sauce is in there, but I don't speak Romanian. <laughs> and everything on there is all in Romanian. That's gorgeous. There really is like a huge online chili pepper and hot sauce community, right? Yeah, it's kind of neat. You know, it's fun that, you know, that now, again, 20 years into it, 22 years collecting, I, I'm kind of like the, the elder spokesman, if you, if you will. And, you know, I like that aspect of it because I have a lot of folks, you know, these newcomers that are coming into it and it's exciting. And that's the other part of me doing this is that I almost consider myself like an educator. I mean, there's just so much stuff out there that people had no idea was available. There's nothing bad, I guess you would say, about the mass-produced stuff that you get at a grocery store. But my gosh, when you start tasting smaller batch, local hot sauces and stuff like that, that are using fresh ingredients, it's just a huge taste difference. Flavor is just, is just amazing. So that's what I try to do is I try to help some of these folks that are the mom and pops, right? They're working 50, 60 an hour a week jobs. And then they're making their hot sauce at night and they're labeling, you know, on Friday night. And they're going to the, to the uh, farmer's market on, on Saturday and Sunday trying to sell it. You know, those are the folks that I want to help. Gotcha. Yeah. And I see on like on your Instagram, you often post like pictures of your newest acquisitions and right. other people in the hot sauce community. Where would you say the majority of your collection comes from? I would say that the U.S. is probably most represented in here. I have a really big um, uh, showing from Canada. Wow. Um, a lot of sauces from New Zealand. It's neat to look at the U.S. market, and, and most of your bottles have that same 
kind of look right american models right kind of that woozy shape right they look kind of like a like a beer bottle right that's where it kind of gets its nickname from and i think one of the things that i really enjoy about the international aspect of it is that the bottles right are so cool right a lot of them have different shapes right a little shorter different necks, bigger cap sizes. It just, they're really neat. I mean, it, this is what really kind of catches my eye on the international models is just the, the differences of what they have out there. And where are these two from? Uh, one is from the UK and the other is from Hungary. Wow. So we mentioned earlier that a lot of people are stuck at home right now, but you're here with us on your day off because you work in the grocery industry. You're, you're out on the front lines of all of this. And how, how is that going? So right now, yes, it's been, it's been a challenge. I feel honored that I'm, that I'm able to still provide for my family and I'm still out there and I'm helping people put food on their tables. And that's, you know, that's, it's a great thing. Yeah, that's really admirable. On a lighter note, are there any other sauces you want to show off? Anything else that really stands out? Oh my God. I can do something simple like that. Oh man, this is incredible. Do you have like kind of organizing principle? Is it like, what's, what's the, do you have like a system to where everything goes? For the most part, I try to keep manufacturers together, right? Um, so a lot of, I've grouped a lot of people that I know um, in certain cabinets and such. So here I'm going to come up to the cabinet, which is all Arizona. Oh my God. There's a wall there. You got some above the doors too, by the looks of it. I got above the doors, yep, yep. And I have another big wall. I'll kind of walk up to over here. So you got it by state and by manufacturer. That's incredible. Right, give a homage, right, to Tabasco, right, the OG. Right. <laughs> I didn't realize there were so many varieties of Tabasco, but I guess it makes Yeah, sense. yeah, it's fun. How's that? That's super cool. I just, I just pray there's never an earthquake there. Right, exactly. So Vic, if people want to know more about your work and your collection, where can they find you? Oh yeah, uh, easiest way is to follow me on Instagram, right? It's pepperboy143. It's spicy fun. <laughs> well, Vic, thank you so much for being on Show and Tell with us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. And I, you know, it's so amazing to actually see the breadth of your collection. Uh, and, you know, wishing you all the best at this time. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I, pre I appreciate the opportunity. Such a pleasure. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching this episode of Show and Tell. For sure, let us know that if, if there's anybody else who has a collection out there that we should be covering, let us know in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to see more videos of incredible collections from around the world.